Welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at an existing calculator. However, there has been an update to this calculator. We're going to be looking at the RC airplane design calculator with the addition being a different airplane type. So the airplane type we'll be looking at today is going to be a powered or unpowered glider. So let's get started. First thing we need to do, jump on the radiocontrolinfo.com website and then hover over the information tab, RC airplane calculators, and then select the RC airplane design calculator. Upon selecting that, we'll arrive at the page where we have the RC airplane design calculator. You could see that the airplane type, it currently says trainer, and there are three options. We've taken a look at the calculator in a previous video and if you're looking to see that previous video it's right here at the very bottom of the page I would highly suggest reviewing that there's information that we will not be covering in this video compared to the video that has already been placed so let's go ahead and select the third option which is glider this is the addition that has been done on this particular calculator under the airplane wingspan this is the only actual parameter that we are entering into this calculator everything else will be calculated. So we can go ahead and place, let's say, a six foot wingspan, which happens to work out to 72 inches. When we go ahead and select the submit button, we'll arrive at the page that has all of our results. So you can see the first area that we are able to look at is the main wing design details. This includes the wingspan, which we do enter. This is the only input. Everything else after this is going to be all of the results and output. The fuselage length, 36, wing area at 399, wing cord at 5.5, wing thickness at 1 and just under a quarter. Aileron total surface area is 43.9 square inches. So what's important about these surface areas that have been given is we have to remember the wing area at 399 includes this 43.9. That's already in this number. We don't need to add 300. 99 plus this 44 square inches. 400 square inches should be everything for the main wing area. Then we have this noted as a starting point, the aileron length and width. Every time that you see this as a starting point, that just really means it's throwing a bunch of numbers out there to kind of help you out whether you want to shape your wing or whether you want to actually have a set aileron length and width that you can already go by. The next dimension is a prop nose to the leading edge of the main wing distance. And this is also termed as G at 11 and a half inches. In fact, if you look above, you could see the wing thickness E, wing cord C, D, B, A. You can actually see this if you scroll down to the bottom, we have a bunch of parameters listed here. So you can see A being the wingspan. You got B, which is this distance here, the fuselage length. You got C, you have the wing area at D. A, B, C, D, E. So we have the thickness here. And you can see, you know, we go through the others and you get to G. So G is this distance from the main leading edge to the prop, or it's either going to be from the main leading edge to the, the start of the plane if you have an unpowered glider. So that's how you're able to use this photo to kind of correlate all of those values to what you see here. When you move down into the horizontal stabilizer design details, we have output the total area for the stabilizer service. You also have the wingspan. So this is noted as a starting point. In fact, almost all of these next few are. The horizontal stabilizer average cord, it's suggested to boot, do about two and a five eighths of an inch. The horizontal stabilizer inner cord at three and a half. Horizontal stabilizer outer cord at one and three quarter. So this really sets you up for that non sort of traditional square wing type. This calculator is based off of having square wings. That's what it's really designed to do. If you deviate away from that, you can expect a little bit of a, a performance difference in variation. And, and that's suggested to go ahead and produce those type of airplanes that do deviate away from where this is sort of calculating. This way you can get a bunch of different test results to see what works out the best. So we have the horizontal stabilizer outer cord wing that we talked about. Next is the elevator surface area at eight and a half square inches. Again, this is already part of this 34. So you don't need to add 34 plus eight. It is simply 34.3 as a total for the horizontal stabilizer area. When you're looking at the main wing leading edge to horizontal stabilizing stabilizer leading edge, this is at 22.2 .2 inches. This is on the drawing below. 
So let's take a look at the vertical stabilizer design details here. So we have this total surface area at about 30, and then we have a bunch of starting points where we have the vertical stabilizer height above the fuselage at 5.82 inches, as well as the lower cord. This is going to be at the fuselage. So if we look at the, the drawing right here, this is the lower cord and this is the top cord. This is going to be placed right on the fuselage and this is away from the fuselage. So that's how that is annotated there. The rudder surface area is at nine square inches. So let's get into the performance design specs, which include the center of gravity, uh, the weight, as well as the recommended power if you are going for a powered glider. So the recommended all up weight as a glider is 29 ounces. And if you have a power glider, it is 35 and just over 35 ounces. So the maximum wing loading as a glider is 10 and a half ounces per square foot. The maximum wing loading for a powered glider is gonna be at 12.7 ounces per square foot. Recommended power output at 35.3 ounces in weight is going to be about 154 watts. Now, of course, much like everything else on this calculator, um, you can have less or you can have more. 154 watts is going to give you about a 40 degree climb out. If you're looking for a 40 degree climb out, this is what kind of power output you need. If you're looking at a more steeper climb out, you're gonna need more power. If you're okay with a 20 degree climb out, you can have less power. So it really depends on what you're doing, what you're looking for, and how much battery life you have on board to see how fast you need to get up to your specific height that you wanna fly from. The center of gravity is listed here at 1.22 inches to 1.66 inches. This is very important because of course, this is what determines if your plane can actually fly, um, whether it's stable or not. It is highly suggested to start more on the nose heavy side of things. This really goes for any sort of airplane design. A tail heavy airplane is not gonna be stable. A nose heavy airplane is gonna be stable. However, it may have some other sort of symptoms where you don't have as much authority in your elevator. Um, it'll land, it'll tend to land fairly quickly, but at least if it does all of these things, you still have control over it. It's still a very much controllable airplane. That's why it's highly suggested to start on the, the nose heavy side of things. In fact, for a glider, what I would recommend is to take the glider and maybe a foot or two feet off the ground, so you may have to kneel on the ground, and then give the, air, the glider an unpowered toss. When you toss it, you're able to see if the tail drops or if the nose is dropping, and you can adjust your, your center gravity based on what you see in that glide test. The reason why you want to stay very low is because you don't want to have a whole bunch of kinetic energy built up so that if something were to be significantly off, let's say, uh, you, try, you try and use these numbers and for some reason your plane is a little bit different because of your wing shape, which means the center of gravity is not going to be based on this. If you're not using that rectangular shape, it might be different. And in that case, you want to probably try and use another form of a calculator to determine your center of gravity, or you can use the method that I'm describing. Throw it based off of a one to two foot height and then determine if it's nose or tail heavy from there. So that really covers this whole entire calculator. If you're looking to see more calculators like this or similar to this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.